Welcome back to Lords of Shadow 2. Now, Dracula is kind of envious, I think, of the Lieutenant's armor, so he switched back into his black dibs. <laughs> He's going to have to get that book back to the library before they charge him a fee. Well, remember, everything is on Carmilla's tab. Oh. It's not just the furniture. <laughs> and, of course, starting off with the Konami Code wink. Come on. Let's not waste any more time. Zovik's lieutenant is extremely punctual, and he does not like it when we screw around. So let's screw around. <laughs> oh. Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, he does look like a very serious boy. I have never seen Berserk, but I feel like he would be right at home with that character designs that I've seen of it. We'll continue on this way. I feel like I've just outed myself as an extreme poser. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you played any Souls games, I think you're like 90% of the way there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, let's not waste any more time. So we'll be spending some chunk of uh, this video with uh, Zubik's Lieutenant. But unfortunately, he will not do things like uh, turn on the circuit breaker. We'll have to do that ourselves. Mm, he won't solve puzzles for us. Well, maybe he will, but he just won't do anything Circuit Breaker related. It's not in his contract with Zobek. Oh. Uh, see, he's not a general contractor, right? Well, I mean, if you remember back in Lords of Shadow 1, Zobek was also very stingy about what he would and would not do with Gabriel. So, you know, he probably warned him about that. Also, this is the Power of Void Kata. <laughs> it is a very useful move with some of the uh, the lesser enemies that are around. Unfortunately, one of the enemies here is a possessed civilian with a shotgun. Oh no. We do not have the move that I mentioned before that makes it really useful to deal with uh, possessed shotgun enemies, but we will be getting that move in this video. Oh, uh, I see you're learning from Kamaki again. Sooner or later, we will learn uh, the proper heat action to uh, to disarm enemies of their guns. But it only works in the dragon style. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to transfer over some mastery. Uh, the important thing is that you can only transfer mastery uh, once for a single move. So once you've reached mastery of a move, that's it. You have to you have to do another move next. Hmm. So we've got we've been barred by some electricity over here. Come and hold this switch. Lieutenant did learn this trick from Zobek, though. Hold this. Yes, he learned that from the statues <laughs> in the uh, the Weigall graveyard. Unfortunately, uh, he's not able to pass. So we're gonna have to find some way to cut the power. Please be literally. Please be literally. You'll see. Now, in this area is... I can't remember. Have we seen yet what the dungeon keys do? I can't remember. It's been a while since we recorded. I'm pretty sure we have. Okay. Well, just in case we haven't, uh, we're going to use up a dungeon key. But unfortunately, I temporarily forget to do the next part of it. But I do come back for it later. Once away for me to reach you. We're working on it, dude. Come on. So, yes, you're, you're right, War Roy. We are literally cutting the power. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So this is the second part after you put in the dungeon key. Uh, gives you a hidden stash. It's usually 2000 XP. I do like that in these modern day sections, they always give you a high vantage point to observe your enemies and give you the opportunity to ambush them. It feels like they really want to do like the Arkham thing. Yeah. Or or at least like 
give you that sense of anticipation before the fight. Like, it's clear that their stealth system is definitely more passive than aggressive as it is in the Arkham games, but they at least want to give you that sense of, you know, tension before the fight. It would be kind of neat, though, if you could do the uh, the Arkham thing and you just, like, uh, incapacitate enemies before they even notice you. Yeah, that would be great. I actually think that the stealth might be, you know, more appreciated if they had a more aggressive route that way. Yeah, it's a lot more fun to play Predator than it is to uh, slowly wait in the shadows. Uh, the, the lieutenant's dialogue is pretty cool, but it gets very repetitive very quickly. He, he charged. He charged by the word. Yeah. Anyway, here's one of the co-op actions with Lieutenant I like. Unfortunately, it, I don't think it happens aside from this one part. Come on, jump to me. Interesting. That is pretty neat, actually. I think something similar happened in the game Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. It's been a while since I played that game, but I think there was a similar co-op action in that game. Of course, with the whole premise of that game was that you were playing each brother directing with one of the analog sticks. Hmm. Weirdly, the that, that co-op action was reminded me a bit of the ones you get in like 50 Cent Blood on the Sand. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes, I remember those! <laughs> it's too bad with, uh, Dracula doesn't have a swear button. Having never played that game, that sounds amazing just for the swear button. <laughs> uh, a swear the, button that could be upgraded, mind you. Wait, what? It also, yes. uh, it's also a good multiplier for your, uh, your, your score. Yeah. With, with stats such as uh, Bragged Profanity and Triple X. Also, this is one uh, this is one area where the climbing mechanic kind of gets a little buggy. Oh my um, god, this is this is reminding me so much of Sonic 06. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's horrible. Um, this map in particular is kind of infamous. Um, I, I really hate it. It's really directionless. It really shows the, the flaws in the, the climbing system because you can't jump off anywhere that's not on the direct path that the game wants you to go. And hmm. they, actually, they actually lengthen the platforming in some areas, uh, particularly for collectibles, based on that restriction. For instance, this pain box down here. I can't get to it. I can't jump down. I have to stay on the path. That's this this seems like poorly designed filler. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, I like this game, but this yeah. map is absolutely poorly designed filler. No question. Yeah, that just seems lousy. <laughs> yeah, this this map is terrible. I'm not. I am not going to defend it. At least they're paying you in pain boxes. Yes. And we almost have a, a new chaos upgrade, so that's good. Unfortunately, we can't get to that paint box just yet. But we did find the exit to Hooker Alley. <laughs> this would be a perfect time for the swear button. Mother is very frightened. Can you come? Oh fuck! It's my son. <laughs> What's happening? Someone wants to hurt us. My son. Mm -hmm. Back to the castle. I really hope they lined up that shot to get the save icon in Dracula's eye. 
And it was at this point I realized I had to censor the name of this area. Otherwise, it would re- it would spoil the big twist that comes up in this next cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the, the top corner. I had, to, I had to blur it out. I thought Kojima wasn't involved in this game. <laughs> Guest starring the skulls. <laughs> it's actually Trenty Trebidoc. Sorry to spoil it. Can't believe Eli's just around the corner. Mm. Hey guys, we found mission 51. Okay. All right, Chaos, I know it's been a while since you saw the uh, Lords of Shadow 1 playthrough, but... Huh. This must be a dream. And if you were never to wake again, would it matter? I destroyed you a long time ago. But that wasn't you. All those years ago. All right. I I need an adult. I am yours now. I am an adult. Oh no. Oh lovely. Mm. Mm. Vampire coat coitus. Oh no, the vampire coin has turned into vampire cooties! Ah! Now I am inside of you, and your weakness will be my strength. So Carmilla's voice actress, Sally DeVette, was one of the names that I censored at the, uh, at the opening credits. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> For a second, I thought those skull, uh, skeletons had uh, glow sticks. <laughs> that would be much funnier. Uh, so Carbella's blood uh, is, yeah, it's possessed us. And uh, that means that we're stuck in this quadrant of the castle until we can find a cure. And uh, we're also introduced to this game's version of the skeleton warriors, which are, for the most part, they're not as aggressive as they were in the first game, but they can be a pain if they if they group up on you. I see. And uh, because we've been poisoned by Carmilla's blood, uh, it actually means that there's a unique game over screen. So I'm going to show that off in a minute. I just need to take enough damage first. Game over as in you get possessed and not like you lose all your health, right? Or are they the same? Uh, you'll see. I swear, I am playing on hard. <laughs> I know it doesn't I swear, look like it. <laughs> I swear, I'm trying to die. <laughs> Does Dracula want a doggy treat? Good boy. I think Dracula's had enough to drink. Yep. Yeah. And it uses the same game over music as the first game, which is a uh, an orchestral rearrangement of the game over music from Castlevania 1. Hmm. Anyway, back to the Skeleton Warriors. Uh, they go absolutely flying if you use the uh, Chaos Claws on them. Nice. As you can see. Yeah, they've been completely redesigned uh, from the first game where they were sort of like tank enemies. But here, they're they're much more dangerous in groups. But a fun opportunity for some aerial combat. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Who needs a launcher when you can just use your bare fists? Or the chaos bombs. Those are also great. They usually mix it up so that w one will have a shield and then the others will try to flank around you. I also like how their their skeletons stretch, which is a, a something that was not really in the first game. They, the first game, they had that like cartoonish tornado attack, <laughs> which was funny, but... You know, I it, it, it was also kind of annoying, but I, I I think I prefer the Skeleton Warriors in two overall. Mm. This guy just will not get up. Just so, are you allowed to heal at all through this section of the castle? Um, well, I mean, you could use Tears of a Saint but it'll just have the same basic effect. It won't cure you. It'll just give you health. Okay, and you're basically stuck with purple uh, life until you're done with this section then. Yeah, you're not able to fast travel. Oh. Uh-oh. Gabriel. Are you real? Or just a dream too? All the women that Gabriel has murdered are going to come back right, right at the uh, the next quarter is Claudia, and then it's going to be Laura. They've been talking to the house. <laughs> oh no! What power is behind this? You're standing here as if a thousand years had not passed since the last time I saw you alive. And no sun. Hidden deep inside you. I had to protect him from you, Gabriel. They knew. They told me what you were going to become. I had no choice. And did they the weird Muppet God made me do it. My hands. Did they tell you what would happen to our child? Did they? Did they tell you? That so this is the game's attempt to, like, justify the weird, uh, forced seen. attempt to make. Mirror of Fate's story makes sense in the grander context of Lords of Shadow 1. Guess I can't fault them for trying. You are no fool. I mean, as ham fisted as it is. I am the dragon, Dracul! I am the prince of darkness! I am and will be forever a thorn in his side! The pebble in his shoe! I know who you are. You are Robert Carlyle, respected character actor. <laughs> but this suffering had to happen. And it will come to an end soon, my love. I have been sent back to help you. Okay, so Marie is... I mean, she's not back from the dead per se, but she's also more than just a figment of Dracula's imagination. Because we'll see later... She interacts with other characters, kind of. Oh, this isn't just a trap from, like, a succubus? Maybe? You'll oh, see. This castle and its inhabitants fear that you will leave this place forever. They will stop at nothing to keep you here. Your power keeps them alive. I know. This place has been my home for many centuries. Until I blew it up and then collected the insurance money. <laughs> All I want to do is escape. What happened to it's all on Camilla's tab? Well, he's playing both sides. Oh, okay. It's no place for you either, Gabriel. It never has been. <clears throat> Dracul. <clears throat> it's time for you to go. It's time for you to return to us your family it's time for you to leave the iron grip of konami <laughs> my blood. seek greener pastures with nintendo become a spirit in super smash brothers ultimate i believe in you you can even keep your sword he does he, he uh, uh roy he actually uh, gabriel lords of shadow one gabriel is a spirit in super smash brothers ultimate 
<laughs> I'm kind of impressed with the storytelling or lack thereof. I'm not sure which. <laughs> it's, it's really trying to tell a bad story. It's really, really trying. Remember, I am always with you. You're not going anywhere, my prince. Okay, so we just had this big emotional cutscene with a huge revelation that Maria has secretly been alive this whole time. And if we go into the pause menu, what does it say? No, that Carmilla is up to no good again, the doy hoy. <laughs> <sighs> Lovely tonal dissonance. I I love this game. It's it's the gift that keeps on giving. Never never change. Lords of Shadow too. So this is a stealth boss fight. I actually like this. Got you. Because for one thing, when you get caught, it's not an instant game over. It just throws you into a fight. That's kind of fun. Yeah, not an especially difficult one either. This might actually be one of the better thought-out areas of the castle, immediately following the ham-fisted <laughs> filler area that we had to go through. Yeah. Anyway, the idea here is that you are, uh, you know, throwing blood down these crosses, which activate these switches here. I'm getting tired of chasing you. It's been 20 seconds, Carmilla, seriously. Um, and uh, you have to throw down all four. But Carmilla can also throw down her own blood, which deactivates the switches. So it's essentially an extended game of cat and mouse. Interesting. This is, like I said, there are two boss fights in this game that use stealth, and I actually like them both. As much as I dislike the regular stealth in this game. I think the, the, two, the two boss fights that use stealth are really good. And also the fact that you could dash during stealth really it really helps so eventually if you get too far away from her Carmela will teleport to your last known location my blood runs through your veins although uh, don't try and use bat swarm on her she doesn't like that You're finished. I can't imagine a lot of people like getting bats thrown at them not gonna lie. All right. So, being the uh, the pro speedrunner, former speedrunner that I am, I I found the optimal strat, which is essentially to kite her around. Where like this, and not get stuck on the bookcase. I'm surprised she can't hear you. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. It's the, the stealth is entirely line of sight. There's no sound at all. I'm getting tired of chasing you. It's good that you can't hear you barfing up blood. Yeah. I can see. Anyway, as soon as you activate all four switches, that's it. Uh, the stealth section is over. Well, that could be worse. Is that's actually really fascinating. Yeah, there's there's one other stealth boss fight later in the game, which a lot of other journalists at the time really hated, but I, I kind of like it. This one's good, though. Ah. 
Anyway, that dodo is being useless, as usual. <laughs> and it will continue screeching. And the, uh, the frequency of its screeching increases when you get closer to it. Oh, it's God. Sitting at that, it's sitting at that, uh, the pillar of sacrifice over there. There he is. We will be looking at uh, the Kleidos challenges starting in video 11. And for some reason, those statues cannot be broken. Not sure why. Hmm. As soon as you enter that area after seeing the uh, the cutscene with Trevor, it says Carmilla's lair, which is why I had to censor it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, way to ruin your own surprise, jackasses. Anyway, once we cross the bridge over across this really beautiful area of the castle, mm -hmm. uh, we'll get to the, the next big phase of the fight with Carmilla. stab us both to be sure okay i know how this works i've got to cut the first marie in half and then the second marie will be so distraught that she'll give up the other marie that's how king solomon's problem works right <laughs> there is one imposter among us don't listen to her gabriel choose me i am your woman i am yours so there is, in fact, a wrong option here. Is the right option always fixed? Yes. It is dependent on their dialogue. I'm going to choose the wrong option because it has a very funny cutscene if you choose the wrong Marie. Follow your heart. You must choose. I'm sorry. I failed you. Wait for it. <laughs> and the rest of this cutscene is just recycled from the regular game over. Okay. All right. So, uh, there. In order to de determine which is the right Marie. The wrong Marie is incredibly thirsty. And the correct Marie is the one who's actually being noble. No, my prince! No! So, the one who wants to get in your pants is the wrong Marie. What a disappointment you are! You... Some bitch gonna get stabbed tonight. I expected Cornell. I was really looking forward to plunge my fangs into his neck.
Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Okay, after I, I recovered my lost video data and, and found the save again, uh, this is the, the actual fight with Carmilla. I, I love that little, uh, that little intro I used. <laughs> I know it. So the, the lightning attacks uh, is, that is a, an ele a special elemental attack uh, similar to fire and other energy attacks. It is something that cannot be dodged. It cannot be blocked. You have to jump over it. <laughs> it's inevitable, my love. You will be mine. That hamster ball is really pissing me off. Well, the hamster ball can be destroyed either with chaos bombs or just with the chaos claws in general. And uh, that's what the flunkies are for. If you run out of magic, you destroy them and they drop magic. Oh, I see. They're they're just there for uh, resource management. Yeah. Basically, any boss that requires you to use magic to defeat it will have flunkies. So that if you run out and you run out of relics, uh, you can still get magic. Also, the, uh, her hamster ball has special hamster ball-like attacks. <laughs> I, I can't tell whether that's a hamster ball or a katamari, to be honest. Is there any chance we can fill it up with feed? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. So this is really another one of those color puzzles that the first game kind of loved. Well, just this phase is, yeah. She actually gets a proper uh, boss fight right now, actually. <laughs> my love runs in your veins, my lord. And now she really starts using those lightning attacks which are extremely difficult uh, to deal with. Because again, you have to dodge in the proper direction. Come on. And yeah, Void Kata does not really work against Carmilla because the, the main effect of that attack is absorbing large groups of enemies. It doesn't really work well against a single enemy, especially not against bosses. Don't ask how she was still able to complete her line while frozen. It's just a video game <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It reminds me of how enemies are still able to uh, uh, to have their death screams in Gears of War after they've been chainsawed in half. Uh, I see that uh, Carmilla is still in the habit of killing her own mooks, as, as was the case in the first game. Some things never change. Yep. Old habits die hard. Oh, yeah. I never really pointed out that you can use the, uh, the Void Dagger and Chaos Bombs in midair. Good to know. Good to know. If this is her love, I'd hate to see her, uh, her hate. I think mm -hmm. the two are kind of intertwined, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, all right. And then she has clones. What? Okay, sure. And not only she has clones, but she has a, an inward lightning attack. Uh, so the way that her clones work, it's not as though there's a, a right clone. You have to attack every clone. And killing each clone does damage to Carmilla. 
Ah. It's not a game of luck. You just have to keep hitting all of them. So she actually did split herself up, not just, you know, make illusions. And the, yeah, and the last, the last Carmela you attack will always be the right one. Ah, I see uh, Dracula is stealing some tricks from the succubus. Nom, nom, nom. I sense we're going to learn a new power. And it wouldn't be Dracula without learning the ability to turn into mist, would it? Mm. So the mist power is really useful if you learn how to time it properly, because it allows you to directly dodge unblockable attacks for the most part, except for those elemental attacks, uh, things like lightning or fire. Those cannot be dodged. Those cannot be dodged by anything, not even mist. But regular unblockable attacks can be dodged by mist. No! No! Leave that filthy whore! Ah. Also, you can restore health by drinking Marie's blood. Is that all she's good for now? Uh, for the moment, yeah. Slightly better than what she was good for in the first game. Oh, yeah. I mean, compa yeah, compared to, her, compared to her role in the first game, that's practically yeah. complete agency. You know what? No, that, that, that's totally fair. She actually, uh... She, she's being helpful. She also asked to, so not only was there consent, but she was the one who, who uh, came up with the idea. Okay, this is going beyond, like, stalker. She's good turning into full-on Comic-Con fangirl. Oh, yeah, you can also parry this attack. Nice. <clears throat> All right. That okay, are you ready? Boss. Hold on, hold on. Are you ready for the least subtle sexual imagery in possibly this entire series? No. Well, you're going to get it anyway. That's not it. Your dreams. That's not it either. Oh, there it is. There we go. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. They just uh, couldn't help themselves, could they? Nope. Man, Pornhub has something for everyone. <laughs> oh, dear. And now Marie is suddenly gone. That's mysterious. I'm sure there won't be any plot-related reasons for that. So, next time, uh, we'll, now that we have missed, we can actually finally get that antidote that we've been looking for for the last five videos now. Mm. Hooray. Excellent. Other other than the, the cheap shit climbing area, that wasn't so bad. 